right, welcome to LED Info. My name is Ron. We're in the LED Info test lab today. We're reviewing the Flyzon Krikov 1000. And this is part of our ongoing project. We've been reviewing the lights that are for sale on eBay and Amazon. And we've reviewed a bunch of lights. We made a list and put it in the description section of all the lights we've reviewed with the uh, links. So if there's a certain light that you're looking for, you know, check out the description section. It's possible we've already reviewed the light. We've been looking mostly at the reasonably priced lights, typically between $50 and $100. And the flies on fits that criteria. It sells for just a little bit over $100 typically on eBay. But it is a serious light. It uses Cobb technology, which stands for chip on board, which basically consists of just stuffing a whole bunch of LEDs into a small area. Now, because of the large number of LEDs in the small area, the light is going to be pretty intense. When we do our PPFD readings today, we're still going to hang the light at 12 inches. For comparison purposes, that's what we found all the lights at is 12 inches. But just understand, if you buy this light, you're going to want to hang the light higher, and you're going to want to use a larger grow tent than you would if you bought one of the smaller quantum boards that we've reviewed previously. All right, so here is the Flyzon Krikov 1000, brand spanking new right out of the box. This is a big light. It's 16 and a half by 9.5 by 2.5 inches thick. You'll notice the two cob assemblies, each of them have uh, 210 LEDs. The smaller LEDs are all 10 watt double chips. There's 58 of them. On the flip side, you'll notice that there's two fans, uh, which is good. These cob units tend to produce a little bit of heat, and there's vents on the back and on the sides to help with the heat dispersion. There's two switches. One says Veg and Bloom, one says Stronger. According to the instruction sheet that I found, they recommend using the Veg and Bloom when uh, plants are seedlings, and then use both switches at all other times, which makes sense to me. You know, we're always going to want to give the plants as much light as possible, but each grower can make their own decisions on how to utilize these buttons. The light has uh, both ultraviolet and infrared LEDs, which is great. The infrared helps with uh, flowering, and the ultraviolet is said to help with resin production. According to the specification sheet, this light uses 245 actual watts, which we're going to test here in a minute. But if that's even close to being accurate, this will be by far the most powerful light that we've looked at so far. Okay, so we've been reviewing the Flyzon Krikov 1000. We have the Flyzon literally blazing away in our test chamber. It's hung at a level 12 inches of height, which is mainly for comparison purposes. All the lights we've reviewed so far, we've hung the light at 12 inches. As we mentioned earlier, though, if you purchase this light, you're going to need to hang the light higher. Use a larger grow tent. You'll also have to deal with a lot more heat than if you purchase one of the quantum boards that we've been looking at. But I'm anxious to see what kind of numbers this one produces. We're going to button up the test chamber, and we'll have that all-important dead center reading here coming right up for you. Okay, so there it is, 2412. That's dead center 12 inches through the Flyzon Krikov 1000. Now, I'll go on ahead and complete the full PPFD grid. Do pay extra attention to the grid, though. Uh, we expect the uh, outside numbers to be much lower. Uh, the light has those two cob units in the middle, so it's natural that, you know, that the lights are going to be very powerful in the middle and maybe not so much on the outside. Pay extra attention to the um, average PPFD and then the DLI number. We'll also post the test lab review sheet, and we'll stop by the watt meter, see what the actual watt usage is on this one. According to the specification sheet, it uses 245 actual watts. So if it's even close to that, that's something to consider. That's about two and a half times more electricity usage than the quantum boards that we've been looking at. So um, we're going to wrap this one up. We want to thank you for stopping by. Hope you have a good one, and we'll see you next time.